Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. So I came across this fabric covered bead necklace from Louis Vuitton. It is so cute and adorable. I love the different size beads. I love the different fabrics mixed in. I just feel like it looks really chic and really cool. And I thought, hey, I can make that. So I went to look it up uh, to see if there were any other tutorials for it. I found some that had you create a tube and then you insert the beads in the fabric tube and then tie knots in the fabric and it just didn't have the same effect. So I decided I was going to try and come up with my own tutorial to make the beads look more like the inspiration. Today I'm using the fabrics from my Stylemaker Fabrics Fall Style Tour dress. You might remember the mixed print dress. These fabrics come in eight different patterns, and today I'm going to be using, well, in my necklaces, I used, I think, three of them. So here are the necklaces whenever you are all done. The two on the right have the fabric covered beads, and then I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make the necklace as well, and that's what the one on the left looks like. All right, so I found these wooden beads in... Joanne over not in the wood section actually closer to the jewelry section and they came in one pack together all three of these colors the colors sort of don't matter I will say that if you're using a light colored fabric like this the dark bead might show through a little bit um, so maybe you just err on the side of caution and use a light colored bead for that but otherwise you, they're really interchangeable and in the uh set come three different sizes. Well, there's a bunch of different sizes. I'm using the super, super small ones like this for another um, like home decor thing that I made. But they come in a bunch of different sizes. But the ones that we're gonna use for this necklace are these gigantic ones, the biggest ones that come in. And then there's this like mid range one as well. And then if you wanna fight with it, you can try these little ones, but the smaller they get, the smaller the holes get. So if you have some kind of um, power tools, a drill that you can, you know, safely make that hole bigger, by all means, um, use the small ones as well. But I'm just going to be using the bigger ones and in fact, not even this big one because the hole's not big enough. So it'll be more like this. So I'm just gonna use these two sizes. There's plenty in there for multiple necklaces. I've made three necklaces so far, and this will be my fourth, and I still have plenty of beads to choose from. So check the description box. If it's available online, I'll have a link to it there. All right, so the very first step is to, like these beads come, like see how they're shiny? So they come like with some kind of coating on them, which make them really beautiful if you're using them as is. But since we're trying to cover them, I wanna make sure the Mod Podge is gonna stick really well. So I am just using a little bit of 120 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to, you know, kind of try and peel back some of that shine a little bit. I'm not trying to get it down to the natural wood. I'm just trying to scrape it up a little bit so the Mod Podge has something to hold on to. I've also found that this little technique works really well. If you put the, especially for the smaller beads, put the sandpaper down and then kind of like a fruit, you know how when you're trying to get the, um, the rind or the peel um, for desserts or whatever you need and you know, you rub the fruit on the grater. That's kind of where this idea comes from, but just whip it around a little bit until all that shine goes away. All right, so we're looking for something similar to this. You can see it's not completely gone, it's just mostly gone. Um, and then the next step is going to be to take your fabric. So I've cut these into roughly three by three squares. Again, it's gonna vary depending on the size of your bead. Um, we are gonna end up trimming it down a little bit, so don't fret too much if your piece seems too big. It will still, it'll be fine. Um, the next step is to insert the fabric through the center of the bead with the right side down. And I kind of just scrunch it up like this. And thankfully this hole is really big. Push it in most of the way and then take my weeder tool from my Cricut 
set and use that tip to pull this out. So maybe you don't have a weeder tool, you can use anything that you think would work. Um, probably even a toothpick um, would help, but all right, and you just pull it through halfway and try and get one side facing down and one side facing up. So it's gonna be twisted in the middle. Pull it most of the way through and then Essentially what we're doing is pulling all of this around the bead nice and tight like so. Does that make sense? And then we'll shove all the ends through the other end. So that's what we're going for. We're gonna use a little bit of glue to help us. Again, you want most of the fabric to be out of one side and just a little bit hanging out of this side because inevitably you will start tugging on that a little bit and you don't want it to slip all the way through. So next I just take my Mod Podge and I dab my finger in. It's a little messy project, which is kind of fun. Feels goopy and I don't know. It's fun to play with glue every now and again. You don't need a lot. In fact, you really don't want a lot on there because you don't want it to kind of change the um, composition of the fabric. You don't want it to get super stiff or hard. You just want enough on there so that it um, gives the fabric something to, to stick to. All right, and then like I showed you before, we're just pulling all of this fabric around the bead, kind of trying to tuck in the raw edges if you can. And it's just like a little bit of smoothing and readjusting, starting from the end, from where the hole is, pulling, pulling, smoothing, pulling, smoothing, pulling over and over again until you get it to a place where it looks nice and taut and, you know, really pretty. And once you've got it to a place that you are happy with, um, you can, what is happening here? You can pull all of this to one end. So you have all your fabric at one end, and then we're gonna just trim that off to about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch maybe. And so now we're gonna shove all of this fabric into the other hole of that bead. And the easiest way that I found to do that is to take some kind of like dull-ish awl looking thing. This is a Cricut scoring pen, I think, and shove the pen into the hole and push all the fabric down with it. And keep pulling to get more of that fabric from the inside to release a little bit. There we go. And then keep pushing this down. Maybe get a little bit of glue on the tip. Give it some, not glue, but Mod Podge, to give it some grip, something to hold on to. and then run it around on the inside. And you're gonna wanna just keep working this. I mean, it's not something that's just gonna naturally want to be like this, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's gonna kind of fight you on it. But you just keep working it, keep pushing the fabric through. Then you can see the fabric kind of starts to come out the other end, that's okay. Just keep pushing it down, pushing it back through over and over again until you get your fabric completely wrapped around your bead, something like this. Cool, right? I think it looks, you know, a lot like the inspiration. Or maybe I'm being a little bit biased, but <laughs> I think it looks a lot like the inspiration myself. Okay, now the next step is a little bit, again, it gets kind of tricky. So we need to be able to feed our, whatever we're using for our necklace chain, we need to be able to feed that through this hole. So you actually have to create you know, somewhat of a, a tunnel here so that we can get that cording through. 
So what I've done is taken this pencil and I am just trying to navigate it through until we find an easy way um, to get it through the bead like so. And it kind of finds its way. If this is super, super sharp, like if you have, I don't know, like a chopstick, you know, that's really sharp on the end, um, that would work really well as well. So you just want to make sure that, you know, you have an actual hole. Can you see that for um, your uh, chain necklace or whatever to go through? Inevitably, you'll get a little bit of fuzzies hanging out. That's okay. Just push those back in keeping your little hole maintained as best as you can. It's kind of like just a little bit finicky, but you will get there eventually and have a beautiful fabric covered bead. Okay, that looks really good to me. I have my bead completely covered. Um, if you want to take an extra precaution, you can take your Mod Podge and place it around the end of your pencil. And then when you go to push that back through, it will leave the Mod Podge inside the hole. And that will just secure some of that uh, the fabric on the inside. It'll just kind of like harden it a little bit so that, you know, it'll stay in place. Beautiful, okay, clean that up a little bit. You don't want too much Mod Podge showing because it does alter the um, the texture of the fabric. Trim off any ends, okay, cool. All right, now let's talk about, so you're gonna wanna make a bunch of these and depending on what you want your necklace to look like, you can make them in you know symmetrical, like for this one, this isn't a covered one. This is gonna be my, my cheater version that I'm gonna show you guys later, but you can get an idea of the scale of the bead. So I use one big one, then two of the next biggest size, and then two of the next biggest size, and then two of the next biggest size. So it's biggest out to smallest, very symmetrical. Um, you can also do them just three of them. This one has a small one in the middle and two big ones on the outside. Um, it just really depends on how many beads you want total and how symmetrical you want it to be. The inspiration one actually has like they're kind of all mixed in. It seems a little bit random, even some of the same size right next to each other. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. Um, so you're gonna wanna make a bunch of these, pick out a bunch of different beads, go through this process with wrapping the beads in the fabric and get your collection of beads together. After you're done with that, then you're gonna want to choose your necklace chain, the part that you're gonna feed through the beads. And you have several options you can use. Ribbon, I would use something slightly narrower than this. I think this is five eighths of an inch ribbon. I would try and do quarter inch or three eighths of an inch ribbon just so it's not too bulky. You can do twill tape, which is what I'm gonna be using today. You can do cording. This is a pretty navy cording, which would also look really good. Uh, you can do, here's some more twill tape. This one's a little bit wider and like more cottony. Um, this is half an inch though. Again, I might try and get a slightly smaller twill tape. And then you can get different kinds of trim. Like I found this velvet kind of ribbon looking stuff here. And I thought that that was really beautiful as well. This comes in a ton of colors from Joanne. So um, just pick your poison when it comes to the chain itself. All right, then trim your chain. I'm calling it a chain, but you know what I mean. Um, to a bit of an angle kind of fold it in half like so, and then feed it through the whole of your um, bead. And again, you can take your pencil and kind of work it in. You can take your weeding tool or whatever sharp tool you have and feed it through that way. And then come grab it on the other end whenever you've got it pushed through enough. like that. All right, perfect. Find your halfway point and put one right at the halfway point like so. All right, then you're going to tie um, little knots on either side of the bead. Trying to keep it in the same position 
so that it's centered. And don't tighten these too tight because the hole of the bead is a little bit big. And so it'll tend to want to go through if the hole is too, uh, if the knot is too small. So keep those pretty big. Um, you can also put uh, some, I don't know, glue or uh, maybe hot glue in the middle of the bead after you get it uh, threaded through this, um, you know, your chain so that it will stay, you know, in one place and won't move around a bunch. You know what I mean? If you could secure it in the middle there somehow, that would prevent it from moving around a bunch. Okay, so then you're gonna keep adding your beads and keep tying the knots, right? So you're gonna have a whole collection of these um, going around your necklace. The next step is gonna be to handle the raw edges of the trim. If you're using something like, um, I didn't even show you guys this earlier as an option, but uh, this leather, I don't know what it's called, lace, leather craft lace, suede lace, eighth of an inch, um, this stuff doesn't fray. So you could probably just leave that raw and you'd be fine. But stuff like the velvet definitely is gonna to need to be handled. The twill tape, the ribbon, all of that stuff is gonna need something on the end to prevent it from looking like that. <laughs> so you can obviously tie it in a knot. That's definitely okay. Or you could take it a step further and grab these things called ribbon ends. And these look like this. They're basically itty bitty little clamps that go on the end of your trim. And if you notice, mine are a little bit big or a little bit small for my trim. You can see the edge is hanging out there a little bit. You can buy them bigger. This one's six millimeters. Um, but this is what I had on hand and I am nothing if not just use it if you have it. So what I like to do is just turn in the ends like an envelope, turn each uh, edge into the center, hold it tight, trim this off, and then you take your ribbon end, slide it over the edge, and then use your fingers. All right, there we go. And you clamp it down really good. You can kind of just do it with your fingers. I have a set of pliers here in case, you know, I really want to smash it down real good just to make sure it's on there nice and tight. Um, and there you go. You have like a really pretty, and on the back, it's just like kind of folded in and tucked away and it looks really nice. Okay, so once you get that done to both sides, then you could just leave this like it is, tie it into a bow, and that's how you would wear it around your neck with a with a bow on the end. Or, again, leveling up here, um, you can take a jump ring and attach that to one end. I have just, these are gold. Again, it's all I have on hand right now. Ideally, I'd have silver, but it's all I got, and I'm not running out to Joanne for jump rings. So you just feed your jump ring. If you have any basic knowledge of uh, jewelry making, this will be very, shoot, very intuitive for you. Feed your jump ring through the end of the, um, what are they called, ribbon ends? You can do it. My jump ring might be too big. No. All right, well, we're gonna have to imagine that this is like in there because I think my jump ring is too big for the end, for the ribbon end. Okay, let's just pretend that's on there. Cute, jump ring, awesome. Way to go, Lindsay, awesome. Okay, so then you can get these magnetic clasps. And this is what makes this project really great for anybody in your life who's just like, I don't know, arthritis-y, achy. Um, this, these little magnetic clasps make a, a getting a necklace on yourself so simple. You literally just put it on the end of your jump ring, like so, one on each end, 
And then this is attached here. I'm gonna try one more time. Nope, not going through. Okay, you gotta pretend that this is looking good. <laughs> um, okay, so you have that on this end and then you'd have this other one on this other end. And when you go to place it around your neck, boop, you put it in and the entire like necklace is attached. So this makes it more of like a traditional necklace. Whereas if you do the tie method, it will look something like this on the back of your neck. So just depends on, you know, how you wanna wear it, what you like and all of that. So as a little bit of a bonus, I also wanted to show you like a much faster and easier way to accomplish a similar style where you literally need two supplies. One, you need either an old t-shirt or a scrap of knit fabric, which is what I'm using here. And I cut it along the grain line so that it rolls into itself and makes, I didn't sew anything, it makes like a tube. Then you slide your beads on and again, tie knots around each and every bead. I am definitely going to do the hot glue gun trick on this one because these are sliding around a bunch. And you just tie your knots, tie your knots all the way around. And then because the knit doesn't fray, you don't even have to do anything to the tie ends there. And you can just wear this necklace. I think that the, the lighter color beads with the gray is actually really trendy and modern. And I really, really love that. I think the beads by themselves are still really, really beautiful. So there's that option as well. If you just need the quick and dirty, I've got five minutes to get out the door and I need a gift right now. That's what this option is. But I do think these other options are also beautiful. Here's one that I made using the leather lace. I don't know why, do they really call it that leather lace? Um, and so I think that that is really kind of like earthy, you know, a little bit more organic because of the natural material. Um, so there's that option as well. So I'm gonna be cranking out a bunch of these and I hope you guys do too. Um, I hope you like this idea and think that it's a bit of an upgrade from the other uh, bead, fabric bead necklace tutorials that are out there. This one feels a lot more like the inspiration and a lot less homemade in my opinion. And I hope that you guys agree. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. I hope you will add this to your gift list for the loved ones in your life. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.